So hello everyone, my name is Bilal. I am a solutions architect at Speckle. Uh, Jed? I'm Jed, I, I've already introduced myself in my last talk, I realize, <laughs> so this is a bit stupid to be introducing again, but hi, I'm Jed, I'm a software engineer at Speckle. <laughs> yeah, so today we're gonna talk about cross-platform uh, digital asset management, AKA only send what you need to. So first, let me briefly talk about what we mean when we say cross-platform asset management. So let's say that you have your object in application B, and then for whatever reason, you need to transfer this data into another application, in this case, application B, right? But you don't need everything. Basically, you only need maybe partial information coming from application A. That information may not include the geometry. You might be only interested in maybe the object's name, its position, its rotation, or some other attribute of the element. And using those attributes, you want to recreate those elements within the application B. At Speckle, we believe we can enable this kind of workflows. But let's talk about the why of, like, why enable these kind of workflows. So first, you know, the, the, the classic, we have diverse ecosystem of tools in our industry. Uh, we are not really expecting a single tool to do everything for us, right? We can't expect Revit or SketchUp or Rhino to do all things in a, you know, in a satis uh, satisfying level. So that's why we're always going to be using different tools for different purposes. Also, <clears throat> uh, there's an increasing complexity of projects and there's a need for efficient data management. We've talked about, you know, what is my data strategy? Where is my data? Who owns my data? Right. We have talked about uh, uh, these yesterday. And there are also cross-company workflows. So we don't want to, we don't really want to share everything with uh, all the parties that are involved. Maybe we only want to share uh, the relevant information with them. With Speckle, we can do that. What are the benefits? So first, you're not limited to one tool, right? You can use the right tool for the right purpose. You can combine the most powerful aspects of each application. So you don't need to worry about workarounds anymore. Secondly, we can reduce no, uh, reduce noise. So you don't need to send everything. Uh, you don't need to find the relevant information in everywhere. Only send what you need to. You don't need to model everything in detail everywhere. Model simple objects in one application, create or design, and receive it in detail in another using application. And also, Focus on what matters. Only send the information that you convey to the other parties involved. And lastly, we believe this increases productivity. Why? Because you're not wasting time converting geometry. So, you know, this can be useful for architecture, but also for interior design workflows, where interior designers are not maybe using the tools that architects use. Or they don't use the landscape designers, they don't use the tools the interior designers use, the structural designers, visualization workflows, and more. So some of the featured workflows may include, you know, the, the famous Rhino to Rabbit one, QGIS, Blender, Grasshopper, Tecla, etc. Today we're only gonna focus on three of these workflows and briefly talk about what we do in the background. These workflows are SketchUp to Revit, going from SketchUp for maybe interior design purposes to Revit for documentation. And now from Revit to Blender for visualization workflow. And also lastly, we will talk about Grasshopper to uh, Blender, the Grasshopper to Unreal Engine. So first let's talk about SketchUp to Revit. In this case, I have uh, the demo ready playing in front of you. So you see, I have my design furnitures placed in SketchUp because, you know, SketchUp is really easy to use. It has this huge component library. Now I've created my furniture layout. I want to receive it in Revit uh, for documentation purposes, but I don't want to use the SketchUp stuff. I want to use native Revit families. With this workflow, we can enable that. As you can see, these are not the same assets that we had in SketchUp. These are native Revit families that, ha that have different geometry. And we can confirm that by looking at this. Well, so what happens behind the scenes? You have your object in SketchUp, 
and we want to convert that into Revit, we create a relationship uh, from SketchUp to Revit. Uh, what happens is we create a relationship by the component's name and the family type name. So instead of uh, you know recreating with the geometry, what happens is in the location and the rotation of that component element, you receive a Revit family. Same is true for Revit to Blender. Let's say that you want to go from Revit to Blender for visualization workflows, right? You can send your information from Revit and then replace those ugly trees or the Revit materials with PBR materials in Blender and cool looking uh, Blender assets, uh, uh, Blender uh, trees. That, that is going to look great uh, in your render. So we believe these workflows, especially the, you know the, with the SketchUp one, we can enable some landscape and some uh, interior design workflows. We know these tools are being widely used for for those disciplines. And for Blender, we think you know the visualization side of things is uh, going to be uh, on steroids with this. You can simply receive your data, replace it with your own library assets, and then you have your workflow ready. You can now make changes in one application and get those reflected instantly in another. Now I'll pass over to you, Jed. We're going to talk about the Grasshopper to Unreal. Excellent. Thank you, Bilal. Do you have the powers to move my screen share over? Because I do not. Excellent. Thank you very much. Cool. So uh, the, the few workflows that Bilal's been covering, uh, mostly revolve around the, the features that we've enabled in those connectors. But um, what I wanted to do is also show off Grasshopper to Unreal, where we have two very dev-friendly connectors that we can create custom scripts on either side and kind of implement these sort of custom workflows that aren't necessarily uh, uh, provided by us um, in those connectors and, and maybe enable some more crazy workflows that, that weren't possible with uh, the other sort of connectors. And so what we're demonstrating here, going from Grasshopper to Unreal, is in Grasshopper, we can place these sort of placeholder objects, these symbolic uh, objects that we can map to Unreal assets, same as what you saw in the other connectors. So here we have a Grasshopper script that just arrays some of these placeholder meshes. And in, in this case, it does not matter what meshes these are because we don't use any of the mesh data. This symbol is just there is an object there with a transform. And so we create these um, uh, arrayed objects and we're placing some random points as well that we are then going to map to chairs and trees, right? So we add a custom property to these objects that we are then gonna uh, pick up in the Unreal Engine side. Um, here's the model in Speckle in the speckle front end where we can see when we click on an object, it has this override mesh property that we've added in Grasshopper. And what we can see is uh, on the Unreal side, uh, we can set up a custom converter to inject our own behavior in to override our existing mesh conversion. So in this case, we don't want to convert the actual mesh geometry that you see here. We want to place our own native assets. And so we can do this quite easily uh, by creating a new blueprint, um, checking if this is one of our special mapped meshes. If it is, we can instead ignore the mesh, use the transform property and instantiate our own uh, instance of the uh, blueprint chair or the blueprint tree that we set up in a mapping. Um, if it isn't, one of our fancy meshes, we can just convert it normally. So what that gives us with is similar results to what you've just seen from Bilal, but in Unreal. And yeah, I think uh, this is something that Vicky's been working on uh, with some of her students as well. So Uh, a common a common reference point in order for for the objects to locate correctly. I th I think yes. So I 
like for instance let's say that you're uh, planning to uh, convert your i don't know rhino blocks into rabbit families the origins of those two elements they need to align and also the rotation of of the object should be aligned with the uh, block object coming from rhino in order to have the correct you know visual representation of those elements in in Revit or in any other application. So, yes. And in the case of using blocks and Revit instances, that's quite easy because our connectors already keep track of those transforms and those transforms. Um, in the case of this Unreal demo, I'm actually keeping track of the transforms in our script, which by default wouldn't, like Rhino does not keep track of transforms. So using Grasshopper allows us to keep those transforms and then a reapply those in Unreal. So that's pretty important for this specific uh, Grasshopper script. But for all, all the other connectors that use instances or blocks, uh, that's kind of handled quite a lot cleaner, I think. Um, all right. Thanks for listening. Uh, then I'll pass over to you, Jonathan.